What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 96L over here. We have Invest 97L over here. And we have several tropical waves in the main development region that I'm continuing to monitor as time continues to go on. We're going to go ahead and start with the two big stories, Invest 96 and 97L. We're going to go ahead and get started with 96L just to make things easier. Shower and thunderstorm activities continue in association with a low area of low pressure located about 700 miles east northeast of the Leeward Islands. The system does not appear to have a well-defined certain of circulation. Environmental conditions are forecast to be sufficiently favorable for development over the next few days. This is a bit a big change from where we were yesterday. It said environmental conditions were somewhat favorable. Environmental conditions were marginally conducive. Now it's saying environmental conditions are sufficiently favorable for development over the next few days. A tropical depression or storm is likely to form in the next day or so. Now this is important right here because what I've been looking at, the latest runs I've been seeing with Invest 96L especially, it now has winds of 40 miles per hour, maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour, which means if this does develop, it will automatically become Tropical Storm Emily, according to the next list of the NHC name, as it does meet the Tropical Storm criteria. It just needs to close its circulation, it just needs to organize a little bit more, and that's pretty much it right here. And that's what we have going on right here. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to 97L. It's a 20% chance of development. Now it was 30 yesterday. It's moving into cooler water. It's moving into stronger shear as time continues to go on. I don't have a big prob chance that this thing's going to develop. If anything, this will probably merge with either that frontal boundary that we're talking about or it'll merge with what is now 96L. So that's definitely something to monitor still. But it is appear it appearing to acquire non-tropical characteristics. It's starting to merge that frontal boundary. And the chances of tropical cyclone appear to be d decreasing, as I've said. It's moving at around 30 miles per hour, which is incredibly fast for one of these areas of interest right here. It's definitely something to continue monitoring. However, I'm not as concerned with 97L as I am with 96L, as well as other tropical waves that are either in the main development region or are expected to move into the main development region off the Sahel. So we're going to go ahead and show you those right here. This is the first tropical wave I was monitoring yesterday. It does appear to have fallen apart, at least with the storm activity. Shear has been getting into it. So could this develop? I'm not 100% sure. I'm still monitoring this wave as this does have potential for that to happen. This tropical wave right here has piqued my interest. It is producing some tr uh, some thunderstorm activity. However, when it comes to development, I'm not too concerned because it's in an area of dry air. There's a bit of stronger wind shear around the area, so I'm not terribly concerned with that. But there are a couple of tropical waves that I am concerned of that are going to start moving uh, moving into the main development region in the next few days or so. And we'll get to that in just a second. But before we do, we got to go ahead and talk about the conditions. Here's the global sea temperatures, ladies and gentlemen. Across the board, across much of the Atlantic, once again, I've been saying this like a broken record, way above average sea temperatures. In fact, we're seeing a, a pretty combustible area of 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit waters in parts of the main development region, which I have never seen personally before. I've been doing this whole I've been doing this whole weather thing since 2020 I've been monitoring it since 2020 and I've been doing YouTube since 2021 and I have never seen basically 30 plus degrees Celsius waters in the main development region at a large scale like this I've seen isolated amounts of this but I've never seen it at such a large scale and that's pretty concerning to me right there because let's say we have a tropical wave that moves through starts organizing strengthens into a tropical system and then potentially start strengthening into a hurricane. If it moves through these waters right here by themselves, it could easily speed up that process and make it even stronger. And what it will also help with that is the ocean heat content. Where that 30 plus degrees Celsius water is, is an area of OHC over 100, uh, of over 100. That's pretty much a lot of energy right there. That's rocket fuel for these kinds of systems. And especially concerning is pretty much from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to Haiti and the Dominican Republic, where we're seeing consistent areas of over 150 ocean heat content, basically the, a huge amount of energy right here. Oh, that's pretty concerning right there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear right now. The wind shear I've been looking at 
it has it's been fluctuating up and down where 96 l is it's starting to enter an area of stronger wind shear so that could cause some issues in the short term where 97 l is it's entering some more wind shear conditions that's where that frontal boundary is so it's starting to interact with that so definitely something to monitor still but with 97L, I'm not too concerned because it is starting to interact with that shear. 96L definitely has a chance of development, and the NHC agrees, and it has an 80% chance of development. So, yeah, and then there's this tropical wave where it, it, the shear has been help hurting it quite a bit, but the shear has decreased considerably over the last it's 24 hours or so. So that's what we have going on. It is it going to be moving into better conditions as time continues to go on, but that's, and that's definitely the wave to monitor right there, another wave right there, so that's what we have going on, I want to go ahead and look at the water vapor for, uh, right here, this is the long rate, this is the IR, this is uh, water vapor, and where we are right now across much of the Atlantic, this is the moisture component to all this, there's a lot of dry air still across much of the Atlantic, across much of the main development region, Primarily because of all that Sahara dust that's moving off of the coast of Morocco, Mauritania, those areas right there, and kind of causing this shield from uh, going on. Because once that shield's gone, it's going to be open season for these tropical systems right here. So that's what I'm monitoring right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and the moisture component to all this. We're going to go ahead and show you both forecasts. And we're going to go ahead and first start with the shear and then get to the moisture. We're pulling up the 0Z European to give you a better scope of what's going on. And the European, starting in the next 24 to 48 hours, has the shear just weakening considerably across much of the Atlantic. And by, by basically by 72 hours out, you have a lot less shear in the main development region. You have a lot less shear in the Caribbean, a lot less shear in the Atlantic Basin over here. Let's go ahead and cross-check that with the moisture to see what's going on with that. Yeah, a lot of those areas that have little to no shear are kind of infested with dry air, which is good news because if that air was a lot more moist then we are seeing wind shear at the values that we are, that could definitely cause a lot of problems in the tropics. So that's stuff, so definitely something to continue monitoring. But for now, the, the dry air has been kind of our last line of defense. We're, it's July 31st right now, and as the shear continues to decrease, it all comes down to the dry air. When will the Sahara dust fall? When will the Sahara dust stop? Because once that starts decreasing, once that stops, well, like I said, folks, it's going to be open season. And by, I'd say, five days out, we have th that low wind shear expanding across much of the western Atlantic over here, across the Gulf of Mexico, across pretty much all of the Caribbean, across parts of the main development region. We're going to cross-check that with the moisture component. Once again, there's a lot of dry air in this, so I'm not terribly concerned about it for now, but still something to monitor for sure. And now we're going to go ahead and go about seven days out, which you're starting to she see increasing shear. This is how early August stuff happens. This is how the shear fluctuates. So basically by 10 days out, we are still on that downward trend of sh shear wise, but for now, the dry air is mainly going to be holding this back. So that's what we have going on right here. And that by day 10, there is some moisture pockets that are starting to fire up, but I am noticing a downward trend in the Sahara dust too, because we're starting to see a lot less of that concentrated dry air we're seeing right here. We're starting to see that more concentrated across parts of the Canary Islands right there and less of it moving through the Atlantic. So that, sh that looks like that shield wall is starting to crack a little bit. And I'd say we have about two weeks or so before things start to really ramp up. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. If you want to come hang out with us at Storms United, the Discord server is right over there. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.